we got two things going right now. We got the under construction on the ribs, and this is just like a big model airplane rib. And uh, there's uh, there's 80 of these in the airplane. It's a biplane. It's a big biplane. And we but by the time you get that into a wing structure, it's going to be a real strong wing. This is the fuselage for the fledgling. It's uh, steel tubing. Twenty-nine vintage. It's very lightweight steel too. And there's we had it. We sand had it sandblasted, and kind of prematurely maybe, but it did point out the places where we got to do some repair. Uh, like for instance, anything that's bent like this, that's got to be removed and and properly spliced in with a new piece. These two pieces, so they'll look just like those two when they're done. Uh, even this piece where it's got a crimp, it's not acceptable that to try to straighten that. So we'll, we'll cut that piece out, straighten the bottom, straighten the top, and put a splicing piece in there. There's a, there are several places that need it, that need uh, repair, which will, which will kind of goof up the, uh, the nice white primer paint, but we'll touch that up afterwards. And then uh, here there's a piece outright missing, and we've got that piece all fit with a, with a cluster piece of sheet metal that goes around all this, all in aircraft grade steel. But um, it should This be. is the original wood here? Yeah, that's that's part of the floor. The original floor was in here, but it was pretty raggedy, so we took that out, and we'll replace that completely. And, and the, we've taken all the controls, uh, it had all the engine controls in it, and we've taken that all apart and, and cleaned, that, cleaned that stuff up individually. We have the tail feathers for it. Uh, we have the ailerons that need some repair, need a lot of repair. But basically, this one will this one will go together, and, and, that, and well, it takes a takes a Curtis Challenger engine, which is a an oddball radial engine. It's a six-cylinder radial. It's actually two rows of three because you can't make a radial with an even number of cylinders. But you, but in this case, it's two rows of three cylinders, which works. And uh, we're trying to locate, we've got one in mind for it. And uh, we have a cutaway engine back uh, in our museum, but it's not one that we could repair back to original. So we've got, we've got one we're working on trying to, trying to get it for this airplane. I'm surprised at the welding of that period. Yeah, well, it's, it's Actually, they made the uh, ga it's gas welded. Well, it's and, gas welded, and we'll do it. We're we're going to TIG weld the repairs. But um, actually, tubular steel is old as the uh, hills in airplanes. And uh, Curtis built um, airplanes for for Thomas Baldwin called the he built four of the Red Devils and the Red Devils. And this was 1910, were tubular steel welded fuselages. So it's, they made their acetylene with carbide and they made their oxygen with uh, electrolysis. But those processes you think are quite, quite modern, they're actually not. They're old as, old as the hills. This is typical of what we got with it. And what we did, we had, had the guys take it apart, clean up the metal parts, and then put it right back together again. But this is a this is a, uh, a section of the front spar of the wing, and this is uh, right side up. And, and we we can identify from the wing drawing <coughs> that this is this is station four, which is shown on the print as detail E. But it has it, we can uh, we can tell exactly where this goes. When we make, we'll make the new spars, and these pieces will go right on. We'll we'll do all the drilling, the drilling of the holes, and probably we'll change out the bolts because some of those are pretty raggedy. But the the, the metal structural parts, these kind of guys, boy, this is just that's going to save us a tremendous amount of work. Wow. And they're virtually. And ready so to that go. stands vertical in the wind. Yeah. So it's a, this is the front spar. Uh, this is the front spar inside the back spars. 32 and a half inches away from that. 
Uh, here's so a, all of that would be covered with fabric. Oh yeah, it's all covered. If we put the, what we're going to do is we'll assemble it with all the metal parts on, take them off, fabric cover it, and then put the metal parts back on. And here's a section of the of the back spar, which you can see isn't as deep. It's all their I-beam cross section hollowed out. And this is all Sitka spruce, and it's got the the tough part is all saved for us. And it, It'll be, these are 18 feet long, it'll be all one, these spars will be all one piece. And what is this section? Well, there? there's another section there. This one is, we got that, we can identify the part numbers here. Oh, yeah. And find that on the print. And this is a, this is again a section of the front spar. This is station two on the print. There's a rear spar section. But just having having these metal parts is a real godsend. Yeah. And we also have such things as the fuel tank and the uh, all the cowling. And uh, it just looked like a pile of junk when we started. But we identified mm -hmm. it. Let's see if it. Um, okay, this is the lower wing assembly. And for instance, these clusters of parts I'm showing you over here in the. Been to be like a cluster right here. Uh -huh. This happens to be an aileron actuator here, and we've got those guys are part of the part of the package. What we're doing now is generating spar drawings from this from this assembly drawing. Was this a casting? Yes. This is one that's an aileron, not this particular arm, but this is a, this is an aileron hinge arm. It goes back in here. There's the back back spar right there, and you've got this casting aluminum casting off of that. It's aluminum. Mm-hmm. Oh. The thing we're really looking for is a central float drawing and. And if push comes to shove, we'll uh, we'll design our own float. We have a three-view drawing of the of the float, and we'll show you a, a photograph of the of an airplane of the fledgling on the float. And that's kind of like we'd like to have because then we can fly that. There's a there's a picture of that part right here. Nice. But this is kind of a jigsaw puzzle. It was sort of. It was quite fun to decipher all this and to lay it all out in a great big long table and see what uh -huh. it's done. So do you have the complete drawings of the plan? Well, no, we don't. That's We're looking for them in the National Archives right now. Uh, where we've got a clue that they exist and we haven't been able to access them yet, but we're working on that. Well, we got some of the drawings were available at the uh, San Diego Air and Space Museum. These I got at San Diego, the two wings. What is the airfoil? How is that classified? Oh, I suppose you'd call it a Clark Y. It's a, it's a pretty conventional airfoil uh, that was, well, the, even the America 1914 had a, quite a similar airfoil to this one. But see, it's a central float, and it looks like an A1 float, but it's not. It's it's got quite a V bottom to it, and it's got a step in it, as a, as you would expect, and it's got two wingtip floats out, one mm -hmm. each under each bottom wing, and we've got a drawing of that. And you know, if push comes to shove, we could replace that. There's quite a bit of the electrical stuff that's missing on the back too, and. Uh, but if you look at this sideways, you can see why. I mean, you count cylinders and you say, holy cats, a six-cylinder radio. That don't make any sense. But if you look at it sideways, this one, this one, and this one are in the front row, and this one, this one, and this one are in the back row. So you're really dealing with a, a balanceable engine.